One important component of artificial intelligence is understanding the human language. It powers applications such as speech recognition, machine translation, and virtual assistants like Siri and Alexa. My next guest has made a career in this field. Daniela Braga is founder and CEO of one of the fastest growing startups in the AI space. I met Braga at the Consumer Electronics Show, the annual trade show organized by the Consumer Technology Association in Las Vegas. Thank you for visiting with us. Talk to us about this pathway to AI. So the, they, they might, see, might seem completely different disciplines, but in the end of the day, they are, completely, they are complementary and uh, work perfectly symbiotic, symbiotically. So I started as a linguist. Uh, I was fascinated by the, how humans perceive the world and put it into a language. Now, if you look at AI, AI is the, is, um, is, uh, the, the uh, artificial uh, programming uh, or a representation of uh, and decision making of, uh, of a human brain. And language has, uh, is, is the beginning of that representation in any, in any sense. So uh, by tagging the, the linguistic background, which became, I actually started by doing uh, rules, put, putting languages into programming rules, so translating language into programming rules at, the, at different levels and, and, and creating, so it's from natural language to programming language, which is what AI is about in the end of the day. AI is translating how we communicate, whether it's by voice, by, by writing, by the way we perceive the world, how we see and understand the world, how we hear all our senses. Uh, it's what AI is replicating, really. You say perceive the world, but uh, you go beyond perceiving the world, you go on to seeing the world. I mean, you're, you're kind of a world traveler, and I'm fascinated. Uh, you moved to China. Mm -hmm. I don't think you knew a soul there, right? I no. mean, uh, what was that experience like? I moved to China with Microsoft, uh, really in my, uh, uh, mostly because Microsoft uh, text-to-speech group, so the, the text-to-speech team, uh, which is an AI component, very uh, all the voicing, the synthetic voices that we see today that are mainstream now um, is, is a big component of AI. So that was, that's actually my PhD. I, my PhD is in text-to-speech many, many years ago. And uh, I just happen to be the expert in the company to manage and run that side of the Microsoft emerging voice, uh, first voices. Uh, Beijing, uh, well, from a personal perspective, was very enriching. Uh, Beijing and China in general, I had to learn Chinese. Uh, I barely speak it now. Uh, I decided not to learn the, the orthography. Uh, it's another level of uh, cognitive uh, learning but uh but it gives you give, gave me cultural um uh, cultural awareness and relativism gave me uh, from a career perspective uh, we did create the first 26 languages synthetic voices in um, at microsoft and uh and it was uh i will never it's it's for me years makes me look at perceptions of the Western world towards the Eastern world, uh, very limited. Uh, all, and, uh, and again, this is why we should, we should all talk more to each other. <laughs> That's a whole other story. That no has nothing to do with AI. Braga previously worked at Voicebox Technologies and Microsoft, and was a guest lecturer at the University of Washington. In 2021, Braga was appointed as a member of U.S. President Joe Biden's National Artificial Intelligence Research Resource Task Force. Defined AI uh, is, is your company, um, it, 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 and I want to talk about that. Can you explain it, kind of dumb it down for the rest of us so that we can understand? Because what we get is basically what we see in a movie. Artificial intelligence is the artificial uh, programming of 
of brain, uh, uh, but that, that brain is a machine brain. Uh, it's, it basically tries to replicate our synapses and our, our brain connections and neurological connections. It's a replica of that, but a thousandfold. Because the difference is when in AI, uh, the, power, the cloud computing piece, and the, uh, which, which for, for allows for fast processing essentially, and the data that it's put in AI, and we, while a human takes a whole life to learn uh, through education, through other humans, through watching uh, and learning from experiences and other, and other indirect ways of learning, AI learns the same way through data. The difference is because of, uh, of cloud computing, we can parallelize we can compress the learning, the training, the learning pro, uh, process in AI uh, in, in a manner that, that, it's never, that a human brain will never be able to, to do so because it's really putting together a thousand brains in a short time and all the, that information. So this is why GPTs are outstanding in responding. They respond because they are really not a thousand, they're they are 1.5, they are uh, five trillions of parameters, lots of types. The Gen AI part is the production of unseen content uh, uh, in, in the different uh, modalities of human cognition, whether that it's writing or speaking or visual expression, so image, or, or video production, or music production, or audio production, or code production. AI, Gen AI is that, and it's, it's so much, it's, it's, it relates so much to humans because we do these things every day in some form or fashion. And with these new tools, it just proves we, we, got, we are clearly in AGI, so, uh, which is the phase of AI where humans perform at the level of uh, AI, or AI performs, performs at the levels of humans. It's been always narrow AI, now it's uh, general AI, meaning we are at the level of AIs. And the next phase, in, according to the philo philosophical the philosophers, is uh, when AI performs better than humans, which would be the next phase. And we did accelerate in over, in a, in a we, we, we got to AGI, to this phase, completely unexpectedly in, in, I was, we were all predicting, I was predicting this to happen in the next uh, 20 years, and just happened last year. AI helps in detecting and preventing cyber threats by analyzing network traffic, identifying anomalies, and predicting potential attacks. Well, it's so interesting because last year I was here at CES, all anybody was talking about is AI. This year, I would say even more so. So how do you find your space within that environment where everybody's diving in? How do you carve out a niche? Well, we are very different and very unique. And our niche is all AI starts in data. And we are, and there's not, we are the only American company that has the largest marketplace of training data for Gen AI, and it's Gen AI. We don't carry predictive analytics data for general AI or the other types of AI. So we are in the Gen AI space. We are the largest marketplace in the internet for Gen AI. We, and we are the only one that, uh, that, definitely, that, is, ethical, that is doing this ethically. Uh, ethically me, in, in, implies that there's really still no regulation to cover everything. That's why it goes into the ethical angle. Some call it responsible. Uh, what, what I, I mean, it becomes, uh, and then it, some others call, call it illegal, and it's only illegal when there's legislation, which we're getting there. So we are very unique in our space with that sense. We, there's no other company that is a thought leader that uh, has been uh, around for 80 years, paving the way to legislation in uh, the US and Europe. I was part of the 
of a group of a task force for the White House uh, between 2021 and 2023. Uh, that gave that led to another task force. So in AI, basically setting the 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 ground truths of regu regulations around data privacy, around consent to pay for data, uh, copyrights, non-infringement, um, uh, and digital sweatshops. And yeah, yeah. When you're talking about the task force. I mean, how much value do you provide to a task force, given the fact that you've also operated in China and here in the United States, that you understand it? And as you said, um, we need to talk to each other. We need to listen. You know, I mean, you came, you came with a, probably a different perspective than than what Completely. we see. Yeah, yes. I uh, several things. I was the only representative of a small medium business. Uh, I was the only. Uh, I I am the woman in AI who raised more VC capital in the world. That puts me in a different res uh, res responsibility level. To I mean, women in AI are almost inexistent. Let alone, let even less in positions of uh, C level and capital raise, which is only two percent in every discipline. So, so imagine AI is even basically. Uh, a fraction of that, uh, and I was the only one who also had this path from academia to industry, large corporation, to build my own corporation, and with a global view. I've lived in Europe, in Asia, in China, and in, in the US. Not, no one there had that, those, all these angles. And again, I, when people talk about the race between the US and China, I'm always uh, super, I'm always calling out that we are in such a nascent moment of regular technology, uh, uh, the cat is out of the bag, so we gotta keep catch up to the, to the cat that is out of the bag. Uh, there's, no, there's no bad or good guy because everybody's doing a, a lot, a big deal of uh, evil, let's say in this way in terms of how they're building AI, with no completely disregard or illiteracy, illiteracy around these problems of data that impact so many people and the bias in the models and the results in the models and the information, and, or, or actually the misinformation and hallucinations in the models. Data accuracy, data and model on, data accuracy models, uh, Performing unbiasedly and uh, an accounting of the what's what's in the model, like looking at the model, like what's like a nutrition label, like we look at our the, the products we eat and we look at the nutrition label, should be a, a responsive the responsibility of every builder of AI, and it's still not there. AI is used in the finance industry. Machine learning models can analyze vast amounts of financial data to identify patterns and make predictions. These algorithms in finance and other sectors have a huge effect on consumers, whether they realize it or not. Braga led an effort to develop an ethical AI manifesto that lays out guidelines on equity and transparency in AI. I know that here at the CES, you have a manifesto that's going to be unveiled. What can you tell us about that? So it is, um, it is a, a, a set of uh, rules or, and, uh, and tactical actions to prevent, uh, to, to basically give a framework of operation on what kind of data and how, uh, how do, should you source the data. And it goes, it's basically four things. Number one, data should not be scraped. Number two, uh, we are against digital sweatshops, uh, which basically is using developing countries and third world countries to process data that, will, that should stay in the first world countries. First world countries, I, if, whatever the origin of the data, the data needs to be treated in country. Number three, data should be anonymized. The other thing is copyrights infringement. We stand against copyrights infringement. We, we give a royalty and a rev share to our content creators, to our partners. This is a big deal now. The content crea creators economy is at risk. 
with uh, with uh, with uh, violations of their of their work, and if nothing else, uh, builders of AI should uh, uh, worry about credibility and lawsuits. If it's not for the the responsible part of taking care of uh, contributors, should actually uh, look at the angle of how is a lawsuit going to impact my brand from a consumer perspective. Talk to us about how it works with some companies and your role here at CES, because you told me you're more interested in partnerships than anything else. Mm -hmm. uh, just give us an idea of, of, of your company. We used to work more with the large corporations because those are the ones who require more amounts of data. In a world where everybody is now able to grab an open source model and customize it and build an application around it, which is what we see here a lot, uh, we, uh, we are looking for, for one, that those smaller companies with the awareness of the ethical side of data, uh, instead of scraping the web to uh, customize their model, think that there is an alternative that yes, it's paid, but also what they're doing is a customization. It's paid, but it's safe. That is the thing. It's like you're buying insurance, to not, you're not, you're not going to be sued with our data, and you will be sued with, and we, you can be sued if the data is out there and you haven't asked for consent or paid for. One final question, where do you see the industry like five years from now? I mean, you know, this is almost like a runaway train. You said there needs to be regulations. There are some steps in place. Um, are you hopeful, fearful, optimistic? What would be the word to describe? I am very optimistic. Uh, I, I do think that uh, even, I mean, even uh, globally, little by little, uh, well, Europe and the US are leading the legislation side, I think, uh, it, it, and, and, the, and also because, well, I was going to say US, um, the US is building, Europe is not building AI, unfortunately. Uh, I would love to see China and US coming together to work on legislation together uh, because they are, after all, the bigger builders of AI and the rest of the world will buy from one of them, one of them countries, one of the, com of the countries. So coming, along, coming together to that, and it, it's just like now, we cannot think about navigating to a place without a GPS or uh, making, uh, going on a knowledge search without going on the internet. I mean, I still grew up with going to the library and photocopying books. Nobody thinks about that world anymore or, or, or driving with a map, with a physical map. So any aspect of our life uh, and every skill set of our lives, there will, AI will really be, I like, I like the word co-pilot that Microsoft branded and it's a great world. Every aspect, if you're a doctor, there's not going to be any pre-diagnosis that is not going to be uh, speed, speeded up by an AI system. There will be no, uh, no scheduling that is not assisted by, uh, or notifications that are not assisted by an AI. There will be no uh, exam. College exams will be assisted by AI and the, the, the evaluation of your performance as a student will be how are you criti how what's your critical thinking about the outcome of that AI results and the accuracy of the information? So it's a whole it's gonna be it's gonna be amazing. So great to chat with you. Thank you so much for your insights. Thank you.